This once human guide is all about, in my opinion, the best all around farming route. And this includes a lot of stuff, including wheat, corn, saffron, bellflower, honeysuckle, and sage. What these produce items are going to do is they're going to allow you to craft a whole lot of stuff that you can sell for energy links later on. Super easy, as well as food buffs and everything you'll need. This is also a great Stardust Source Farm and Cortex Levels 1 and 2. I farm this so much that I can easily afford 40 level 3s every single week and have plenty left over. So I, I only need to farm 30 minutes to an hour and I'm basically done farming for a few weeks. Now, this is also a good Energy Links farm. Also, this is how you get Buzzy Bees, which you're going to want 20 of these bad boys on an alt account to grow crops most efficiently. You also get mod parts, uh, weapon and armor drops. You also get random explosives and molotovs and more. Let me show you where we're at. So you can start doing this on week one. This is not a week two farm location. It's just a little bit harder to do. Now, right here, uh, this is the Greywater Camp. If you go east of the Greywater Camp, uh, there is a teleportation tower right here. This little area is called the Ricky Securement Point. We are west of that, okay? But that's not where we're farming. So if I zoom in a bit more, just southwest of this teleportation tower is a place called Winding Ridge Farmland. Let me show you the route. So here is the route. From the teleportation tower, we are going to face southwest. And you're going to see a little rock here. Right behind this rock is a ledge. And this is the first little drop-off that we're going to do. We're just going to go straight southwest. And this is the first saffron. Why do you want saffron? To make energy drinks later on. We also have a bellflower here. I'm kind of just zigzagging left and right for the saffron and the bellflowers. And so we're just going to run over here. We got another bellflower. Now there's cornflowers too, or coneflowers. And uh, we have some sage here. And all of these things make teas, which are very good for leveling and good for selling. But I don't like making teas because they decompose. But we're going to continue southwest. And there's one more saffron over here, kind of on the west side. Go ahead and grab that. And now we're going to be facing a cornfield. And so this is the first corn spot. So we're going to grab all the corn. And you will aggro enemies. Also, we have a buzzy bee. That's very lucky. I normally get two buzzy bees every 15 runs. So for me to get a buzzy bee on my first run. Also, this this is a lot of corn, by the way. I have a whole lot of corn. You're going to want corn for a few reasons. But I'm going to take out this regular enemy here, and I normally don't kill the regular enemies. I'm just doing it so I can explain to you everything without a lot of noise. Alright, also in this cr this cr crate is a horn. Now this is the first boss that you want to kill. So this is a Ro Ro Rosetta Mechanic, so we're going to kill him. He drops a blue set of loot, and this time, what do we get? We got energy links, weapon mod parts, and access card gunpowder, eclipse cortex. So not the best drops, but it's still pretty good. All right, also, that's kind of glitched out. Now we have the Buzzy Bee right here, which is, what is this, west of the cornfield. There we go, we got him. Now there's wheat in this this very field. Sometimes there's a lot, sometimes not so much. Then, looking to our right, we have more corn and more wheat. All right, I'm showing you the route slowly so that you can understand the exact route you need to take. So we're going to grab all of this wheat, and then continuing west, we have more wheat towards this red barn. Now we're going to enter the red barn. And this is the second boss, another Rosetta Mechanic. Now, I normally don't kill the ads. I, don't, I normally don't kill these guys. I just run past them. But if you want, there is Cabbages, which I didn't list because I like to punish people that don't watch the full video. Um, there is Cabbages in these crates. So that's very, very cool. More Cabbages. Now, sadly, you do not get seeds from these Cabbages. All right. Next up, we're going to continue southwest. And we're going to grab this saffron here. There we go. There's another bellflower. There's some more bellflower over there. I don't grab that one usually. I just kind of grab this one. I curve back around east and go towards the red building. But I don't enter it. I walk around the side of the red building. And this is the, 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 this is the third boss, is the bruiser. There we go. So take him out. And again, that is boss loot drops. So we just got three cortexes. Now I'm going to run east. And there's nothing in this field. But in this field, sometimes there's a lot of sage, and sometimes there's no sage at all. So it looks like this time, an okay amount of sage, you know? It's kind of random how much you get and how much you don't get. Now, I'm going to continue east, and I'm going to pull out the car, and I'm going to drive along the road just a tiny bit to this first tree here on my left. Go ahead and get out, and there is a bunch of honeysuckle. There we go, Grab grabbing all this honeysuckle. It's kind of condensed. We also have another saffron. There we go. Now... 
Inside this tree is a honeysuckle. Sometimes you'll try to chop the tree down. I'm going to continue northeast now. We have another bell flower here. And then you can grab oranges if you want. I haven't really found a good use for oranges. I just, I, I don't know what the point is. Usually at this point, though, I'm just going to go ahead and grab them just so you can see. We got some cone flower. We got some bell flower. We got another saffron. There we go. We also have uh, this hawthorn berry and saffron and, again, a lots and lots of crops. This is one of my favorite crop runs. Now, there's also saffron over there. I don't usually grab that saffron. I usually get in the car after the honeysuckle, just kind of floor it this way. Just a little bit. Actually, no, I do grab that saffron. So I'll go up here, grab the saffron, and continuing up this little hill. And I'm normally in the car. There is... Huh, I, I must have missed it. Yeah, so over here, this is the one. This is another saffron and a corn, so I'm grabbing that. So I normally get in the car at this point, because there's one wheat along this route. I'll go ahead and show you. I know it's nighttime. I'm sorry for filming at night. If, Dude, if you can't see the video, turn up your damn brightness, okay? Like, it is very bright on my screens, and I can see in my recording software, which does not take my natural brightness into consideration, that it's still bright. So if you can't see the vid, it's a you problem, not me. We have more saffron here, continuing back up towards the teleportation tower. We have a couple sage. And then finally, I don't grab the apples because those are way too easy to farm, but we have more hawthorn berry and grapes. Okay, grapes, you know, it sucks that there's no seeds for grapes. But then I go to the teleport tower, all right, and I go to the second world. And there we go. And then again, this big fat rock here. This is the one we look at, and then we just start the run over again. The exact same route, over and over. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a run for a little while with a time lapse to show you how much loot we get, and, and then I'll show you what I do with all the loot. So what I'm going to do is a timed run, and we're going to see just how much and how long this takes, and just exactly how much materials we will get doing this. Now, I did one run without the timer, so we're just going to kind of, it's a close estimate, okay, guys? But anyway, let's go ahead and start that timer now. So this is how long it takes for, to do just one run, and I'm going to show 30 minutes worth of runs here. And uh, just note that these runs aren't perfect. All right, so that took about 3 minutes and 8 seconds or so. And uh, if you look at the stuff that we have here, now, um, again, we did two runs, so we can say this is about 6 minutes worth or so. We have 35 saffron, which is huge. 19 bellflower, 14 coneflower, 21 sage, that's a lot of teas, 41 corns, 25 wheats. Now, the cabbage does not respawn. It respawns every four hours of real life time. And the way loot works in these like strongholds is it is like 12 a.m. Eastern, and then it'd be 4 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Eastern. So whatever your time zone is, you'll have to adjust it from Eastern Standard Time, 12 a.m. Uh, 19 Honeysuckle, the oranges, I didn't loot the second time around, and then I didn't loot all the Hawthorns the second time around, but we got two grapes, that's two runs, alright, so that's very, very good, and then you can see here that we got, uh, we got some seeds, not a big deal, I'm not gonna go over seeds too much, but we have a level 2 Cortex, we have 5 level 1 Cortexes, we have 6 Stardust Source, I also got a, a gun drop, I already forgot what it was, but I'm going to do some more runs now, just so we can see the loot after even more time, so... Let me start that timer back up. Well, let me switch worlds, and then we'll, we'll go to world three. And we're going to start that timer once again here. Let's go. All right, so this is now 27 minutes worth because we already had the three minutes. And uh, I got a lot more buzzy bees than I should have, so I'm going to talk about that later in the video. But um, this, the bosses here, they did nerf the Stardust Source because this I used to get like thousands of Stardust Source doing this. And... Unfortunately, it's not as good, but I do show you a better spot later, though I don't show a good example of it because I just do the run once, so stay tuned for that. If you're just here for Stardust Source, that's fine, though the real big juicy part of this vid is I actually discovered just how much energy links all of this farming actually makes, and um, you pro it's probably spoiled in the title or the thumbnail, I'm sure, when I do that part. Of this video, it's uh, I'm just gonna spoil it for you now. It's 500,000 an hour with a certain mimetic, otherwise, it's like 300k an hour, which is still really good. That's like you farm one hour and then you empty all the vendors on two of your characters for the whole week. That is insane. That is, I didn't I didn't realize it was this good, and I'm I'm worried that if I put this video out, it's gonna get nerfed. But hey, that's just that's just the nature of being a YouTuber is 
you know, if things get nerfed, I get blamed for it. Eventually, someone will just hunt me down in the real world, and that'll be that. I can float away to greener pastures, I guess. But with that said, let's get back to the live, non-sped-up version of the game. Alright, so if we count the first run, which is about 3 minutes, we have 30 minutes worth of time here. 30 minutes worth of farm. So I'm just going to quickly scroll my inventory here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and tally everything up on the screen. And then I'm going to show you the earnings of how much you can make per hour doing this kind of sorta. What you can expect to do with all this stuff. And let's, let's just sort everything real quick. Hit that sort button. You can see, according to the grapes, we did 10 runs. Um, so yeah, 10 runs in 30 minutes, that's 20 runs an hour, basically. And um, I would have done a few of these runs much faster, however, there was server lag, so my Frost Vortex was not proccing, meaning I had to sit there and reload against, like, low-level mobs. Like, how embarrassing. But I'm gonna teleport to base now, I'm gonna get all the numbers up on the screen and show you why we did all this. So, here is the loot. I'm not gonna say everything. I will say that we got more than above average on the Buzzy Bees, which is good for me, but whatever. I'm just going to scroll it real quick just in case you're curious and we're going to do some stuff with, with these items and I'm going to show you how we're going to make money with this stuff and why it's a good run. Now I'm going to say another thing too is that the Stardust Source got nerfed. This used to give way, way more Stardust Source and now it doesn't but I, I know another place and just real quick I'm going to show you that other place in case you clicked on this video for Stardust Source. But before I do that, I just want to say that uh, that got us four level three Cortexes. Now, this area that I'm about to show you is also good for Cortexes. In the high level zones, what you're going to do is move your map all the way to the very top leftmost teleporter here, the Forsaken Monolith. Right here, this is the Forsaken Monolith level 50 zone. You're going to teleport to this tower and... Again, if you just clicked on this video for Cortexes and Stardust Source, I got you covered. Now, this place has no produce or other loot, really. Uh, but, so what you do, from the teleporter, you're going to run east, or I just drive my car. I don't really run there. So, I get in the car, and then I go east. And right behind this, this jeep, there's a boss. So we're just going to run up and machine gun him down. And there we go, no server lag this time, he goes down fast. And then this guy drops a bunch of stuff, very similar. So, no Stardust Source that time. Or high level cortex. We're gonna run into the southern building, run past all the guards. Did you hear that? And uh, <laughs> I get sick of hearing that so much. And then there's a second boss right here. Also, his mobs just spawned in from, I guess, the server lag. Oh, look at him sidestep. Look at that. There we go. And he drops some stuff too. So we grab that. And again, still no Stardust Source or anything, but then we just drive back to the teleporter and then change worlds. And this run is really quick for double bossing, especially high level bosses. And if you have alt characters that are following you, like if you have multiple devices or friends, I guess, you can power level them here and get them to 50 really, really quick. But uh, yeah, we're just going to hop to this teleporter. And then all you do is change worlds. So we go to world two here and etc, etc. And then that's how you do that farm. So it's processing time, and I'm going to show you all the stuff we're going to make, why we make it, how we make it. And so I just want to say that the grapes, wheat, oranges, cabbages, berries, uh, corn, it, those last one day in the fridge. The coneflower, sage, saffron, bellflower, honeysuckle last nine days in the fridge. So first we'll start with the corn and the wheat. Now you should always have a good stockpile of corn oil because you're going to want corn oil to make sardine cans which is the canned seafood, that's the mining food buff, so that you get 6,666% mining yield some of the time, which has never happened for me. I always get the 66% yield. Let me show you on the screen what I'm talking about here. So, uh, well, this character might not be able to make it because it's an alt character, but uh, yeah, he can't make it. But I, can, I have already cooked food I can show you. So, corn oil, you're going to need this to craft this thing right here. This is the canned seafood and oil. This gives you the chance to uh, get a yield bonus when mining or logging, it says. I didn't know it was for logging, too. Interesting. But uh, regardless, these things you need corn oil for. I haven't really found much else other use of corn oil. But we want to make, uh, what is it? We want to make malt and corn ale with our remaining amount of corn and wheat. But again, always keep some of that corn oil in stock. Never run out of that stuff. Yeah, you can find it naturally, but it's it's random. You want to at least have like a hundred or so. So it's time to make alcohol. So all you got to do is put your corn and your wheat into a brewing barrel with some purified water. And I like to uh, divvy it up here. So 
129 is like, uh, hold on, I have the numbers. So we want to put 64 in each of the, was that wheat? Yes, wheat. So 64 into each. We'll put 64, and you don't, well, I put 66, whatever. It'll be uneven and that's totally fine. And then we will just put the remaining wheat in here. And you don't want to overcrowd this. Because uh, if you do, and that's weird, it's showing like a negative value, insufficient. Oh, that's because it's a one. So every two wheat becomes one. Uh, and then the corn was 66, I believe. So yeah, we'll just throw 66 in there. And then you just let it do its thing and you'll come back later to some free items. And you could keep these items if you want. You can totally keep these items and use them. And what they do is they just give you hydration, but they also cure basically all of your sanity. And they prevent you from losing sanity, which is amazing during a few boss fights and events in the world. They, like, quickly, rapidly drain your sanity. So, these things prevent you from losing percent maximum HP in those encounters. So, they're kind of mandatory. But I like to just sell them for energy links. Now, we're going to get a total of all the energy links earned at the end. And we'll do some math there and figure out how much per hour we're actually earning with this and if it's worth it or not for you at home but i think it's really good because of the seeds because i i have me a grow house now i want to talk just real quick about the grow house you should have a stockpile of sugar and possibly deviated beets for the next part very important to have sugar deviated beets also important to have ice cubes which i accidentally messed up so the way ice cubes work is if you put pure water in a fridge you can make ice and as long as you never open the ice menu, 100 ice cubes will remain in this freezer, not decaying. But as soon as you check on that ice, it starts decaying. You got four hours if you put the ice back in the fridge until it goes away. So that sucks. And you get one ice cube a minute. And so I accidentally forgot to make ice before filming this video. So I've got to wait a little bit for the next part to show you. Also, I'm aware I had the wrong light setting on my beats. It's fixed. The beats are fine. Don't cry about virtual fake pixelated plants. Now, one other thing, too, to process a few more of our items. You're going to want a recipe. So here's Greywater Camp, and just northeast of Greywater Camp is this town, which this alt character has not explored. Uh, and it's right inside this building on the counter. It's like a chicken fast food place. You go in there on the counter. is It's the assorted canned fruit recipe. Now, if you're wondering, malt and corn ale sell for 200 energy links each. So, if we can farm 66 and 64 in 30 minutes, that means we can farm 260 per hour, which is 52,000 energy links per hour, and that's just off two ingredients. We're going to process the rest, though. And I'll, I'll have all this at the end of the video, too, all nice and added up for you so you can see the full amount. And just for now, just keep, just keep watching. Next up, we're going to be processing the 163 saffron that we got. There's a few other steps that you need to do, though, in order to make the best item with saffron. That would be Stardust Energy Drink. You will need your Mimetics uh, set, and you can't do this till week two. You will need the final dishes, dishes four unlocked, to be able to craft this. But I also recommend that you, if, if you don't get this, roll alt characters on different Steam accounts until you get this. And that is Canned Goods Mini Canner. It is a Star Chef, um, you know, memetic specialization, meme spec. And it gives you a plus one yield when crafting canned goods. Now, you may think a canned good is like a can of uh, meat or something, but the Stardust Energy Drink counts as a canned good. And so this takes saffron, this takes purified water, this also takes sugar and aluminum ingots. So... When I, when earlier when I talked about that beet farm, you need to have a beet farm going so that you can use the beets to make sugar. And uh, I also talked about that recipe earlier, the assorted canned fruit. And because you have a beet farm, you're going to be getting some deviated beets. And all you need to do is go get some coconuts and aluminum ingots. And this is also a canned item. So this character, when he crafts a canned item, he gets two of them. And that doubles our earnings. And I'm going to not only show you how much uh, we can get from this, but also how much uh, we earn XP-wise. So here's the quick and dirty math. Uh, in 30 minutes, we got 163 saffron. This is 81 crafts. Uh, with the mimetic, you'll get 162 cans of this stuff. So you can make 324 cans per hour.
Don't you just love it when you're trying to get a nice little nap in and the Digby boys decide to mine right above your bed and knock the sediment all on your bed? Oh, jeez. All right, the cooking is complete. Let's see how much XP this gave. And yoinkers. So that says 2,065 XP. Not bad. So that puts us at 4,130 per hour just from this one thing so far. So as you can see here, the can sells for 800 each, which means we can sell 162 per hour without the memetic spec or 324 with memetic spec. Now this is 129,600 per hour without spec or 259,200 with the spec. And you may be thinking, but Swole Benji, all of the vendors combined may not have that much. They do, because if you have multiple alt accounts or friends, then they can all get in on this. And you can also sell these at a discount to other players so they can sell it or drink it for themselves. Now, here is some quick Buzzy B Beats math. I know, that's pretty crazy. So... Beets take six real life hours to grow with 120 planter boxes. And I'm going to make a whole video on how to set up this grow house that I have pre pretty much fully automated. Now, nine, uh, I'm sorry, hold on. So with the yield fertilizer and because season one has a growth event during August for additional yield, I get nine beets per plant. So 1,080 beets. Okay, which is 1,080 sugars, sort of. However, I will average 10 deviated crops per 120 plants. This is an 8.333% chance to be deviated. One buzzy bee will increase a random plant to 21%, which adds on to that 8.333% or 29.333% times 20 bees. If you have 20 bees, I sort of do. I'm not utilizing 20 at the moment, but I usually do. Uh, the bee-boosted plants, so you have 20 of those, you get an average of 5.8. And then the non-bee-boosted plants is an average of 8.3. So you're going to expect 14.1996 deviated beets per growth cycle, all right? So this is basically, uh, it's a bunch, okay? It's, it, it's plenty. So let's get some coconuts real quick because we have 20 deviated beets to make these canned fruits with. And we just need coconut and aluminum ingots. So where the hell do you get coconut? We're going to go all the way down to the south teleporter here. So this is Myers Market in southwest. There is a teleporter right here. This is the mushroom cave. A lot of people know where this teleporter is. But there are coconut trees right outside. And we just need 20 coconuts. So, wow, it is actually taking a while to load for some reason. I don't know why. But you, you spin around and just to the east there are these coconut oh my i don't have any gathering tools this is an alt character oh my this is gonna take forever now i just want to say with a chainsaw you get way way more coconuts than two from a tree but i had to i had to craft a crude pickaxe because this is just an alt character he's not meant to gather anything so processing deviated beets because you should be growing beets for this farm route. I know I didn't explain that at the start of the video, but I like to surprise my viewers with additional bonus stuff if they, you know, don't skip around. But anyway, so we, uh, on average, I'm going to say per day, you'll probably get 20 deviated beets with no buzzy bees and the most horrible luck and probably not as a most, a more efficient grow house than I have. Again, that's going to be a whole separate video on how to set that up. So Subscribe and look forward to that. Look at that. I told you to subscribe halfway through a damn video. I have not honestly asked people to subscribe to my channel for like 40,000 subscribers. So this is a first, okay? Anyway, 20 deviated beets is going to make us 40 assorted canned fruit. Let's go ahead and craft them. And these things sell for a whole lot of money. I'm going to show you. All right, we just crafted 20. Let's see how much XP this gives. And I just want to say that these are useful or weak spot damage builds, which there is one for shrapnel, which I am currently experimenting with. But, all right, the XP gain is 510. Not a lot. So, as you can see here, let me move the text. One of these is worth 1,200. So, uh, that means we can earn 24,000 without spec or 48,000 with specialization. And again, this is once per day. This is not hourly. The next items we will process is sage, bellflower, honeysuckle, cone, and coneflower. Uh, so all of these items will be made into ice tea, which is the herb. All right. And then it's going to be two purified waters and two ice cubes. And uh, you, if you don't have access to these for whatever reason, you can do this in week one with fruit tea. 
But Fruit Tea only gives you 45 energy links per, and you just need purified water. You don't need the ice cubes. So that's that's a week one alternative, but we're going to do the iced tea. So let's do the XP per hour calculations. I have crafted 99 iced teas, which is going to give us, uh, let's see, 2,524 XP. So this means, because we can craft, it's a little bit more than six, but we're just going to say six to make the math easy. We're going to round it down. So this would be 15,144 XP per hour. And as you can see here, one T sells for 300 energy links, meaning we can craft 602 of these an hour, meaning we make 180,600 energy links an hour. And you may be wondering, well, what about the grapes and the hawthorn berries and even the cabbage that you can get once every four hours? And look, none of those are even worth bothering with. You can make, there's like a, there's like a fruit pie thing you can make with the grapes, but you need bananas and apples and... Yeah, we can get apples on that route, but bananas we can get at that coconut area because those are banana trees. It, it's like 500 each, and you only get like 20 of them, which would be 10,000 energy links. So it's not even worth considering at all. I don't even bother with them, honestly. I don't even bother. Now, what about the mob killing? Because I used the level 50 character in the footage. It didn't show any XP gains. But if you are underleveled, each of those bosses gives 500 XP, and I rounded that number down. Now, if you are over-leveled, as in you're in your like high 30s of 40s, you're getting 150 per kill instead. And because we kill three bosses each run, and each run took three minutes, that means we kill 60 bosses an hour, or 30,000 XP if under-leveled, and 9,000 XP if over-leveled per hour. Here is the XP earnings per hour. Now, I did not add those deviated beats, because that's like it's like 500, what do you do? Like, go kill one boss mob, right? So here's the sources, the ice tea being the big one, and if you're underleveled when you're killing those bosses, that's also a big one. So the total XP per hour, boom, there you go. So here is the earnings per hour for energy links. The ales are 52,000. The Stardust energy drink depends if you have canning or not. And I want to note, just in these calculations, I did not count the deviated beats for the assorted canned fruits. Okay, that would add even more to this. But I have with and without the memetic spec, and then the ice tea is 180,000 regardless. And now, this is what I didn't calculate in the middle of the video is the boss drops. I went back and looked at my footage, and uh, they're giving about, uh, I'm rounding down on these numbers. They're giving more than this, but I rounded down for easy calculation. So, because we get 350 energy links from the bosses every three minutes, that's 7,000 an hour. So, here's the total. 369,200 without mimetic spec. And what the hell is that Chephosaurus doing? 498,800 with mimetic spec. Now, I want you to note, and the buzzy bee, they're like, hey, guy, hey, camera. Uh, the vendors only have 250,000 per week in total per character, I believe. I, I could be wrong on this. But uh, two characters, your main and your alt, is you can empty the vendors every single week for just one hour of grind. And now to address the complaints. But it takes hours for the beats to become sugar, dude. Eludum is it free? It technically is, if you know how to salvage stuff correctly. Ice takes ages and brewing barrel is slow. I know people are going to leave these comments, and so I just want to say right now, you set all this stuff up, you go to bed, you wake up, it's ready to go, you sell it, you're done for the week. You can you grind that area that I showed you in the video for one hour. Oh no, it's a, it's an MMO-ish RPG. Not really, but it, it kind of calls itself that. Wow, grinding is part of these games. One hour of your time, bro. Like, come on, I spend twice as long at the gym. Come on, you can grind for a single hour in a shooting game. What else are you doing? Sit around your base, petting your Digby boys? What's going on? Just get out there and grind it out, bro. And I just want to say that, like, I have no reason to ever, like, use the the freaking text chat to trade with people. I don't need their money. I don't need to be selling them stuff at a, at a discount so I can get more money. You At some point, energy links become completely useless. Even, like, I, this facility is meant to... Th this pumps oil. These are oil pumps right here, and there's way more, okay, in, in inside the base. Okay, there's, like, 20, 30 more... That's being refined into fuel. The fuel is being refined into stardust source. I Damn it, get out of the way, rabbit. What the hell? He's pushing me around. He's a bully. Uh, so as you can see here, we have even more oil pumps. These are being turned into fuel, okay, which is being turned into stardust source. 
we have plenty of sul- Okay, he, he took a bunch of sulfur, but we have plenty of these machines turning sulfur into acid. All right, we have basically everything on farm status. I don't ever need to trade with anyone unless I'm buying, like, a legendary, you know, uh, calibration. That's the only thing I buy from other people. I have infinite money to do so on infinite alts with infinite Steam accounts if I need to. One hour of grind, I can basically buy anything I want in the game. Someone the other day was selling a memetic, like, thingy for one million energy links. I'm like, oh, that's just two hours, right? That's two hours of grinding for something that has, like, a less than 1% chance to drop. That's easy. That is insanely easy to get, right? I didn't buy it because I didn't need it because I don't give a damn about the bio-missile stuff and the red plasma because I'm going to let the clannies do that. And no, I'm not in a clan, but that's that's their job. If they want to do the Primal Wars, it's not my problem. Pours oil down the drain. So as you can see, I just solved your energy link problems. And um, yeah, so if you have a better way of farming energy links, let me know. I know, I know one guy made a video where he goes to, I think it's Securement Silo Theta or something, and he farms this every minute and 20 seconds. And without, um, oh, he does it on hard mode. And without controllers, he gets like 4,500 energy links a run. And he was like, this is the best way to make energy links. I'm like, no, it's not. So, you know what? Let's just do a little bit of quickie math here. So he gets 4,500 every minute and a half. 60 divided by 1.5. That's a minute and a half. So he 40 times 4,500. So he farms 180,000 energy links an hour. We farm 500,000, okay? 500,000, you know, subtract uh, 180,000, and I don't know why I'm clicking. There you go. We out, we outpace him more than double. Like, come on, dude. Like, we have energy links on lock, and you may be thinking, well, I don't have alts, or I can't make an alt because the server's full. Well, that's, uh, you know, next next cycle. There you go. There, they should be having friend code links coming on a August 15th. That you can just give to yourself and get your alts in. And if you don't have multiple Steam accounts, what are you doing on Steam, bro? Are you not playing the banana game? I have a video about that as well. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Soul Benji. I've got a lot of useful stuff coming out. If you don't know how to grow crops properly, and the whole beets thing has you confused and you have no idea where to start, I'm going to make a video on how to make this grow house. This is 120 planter boxes. It is completely automated. And I, I can put out way more buzzy bees, but I'm not at the moment because I kind of want all the variety here for a video. And again, this is completely automated. All I have to do is go over here to these um, these grocery rooms and pick up my loot, and they never decay until I open the grocery room cage. They literally stay preserved forever. And as long as I have enough seeds, they get automatically replanted. They're automatically watered, fertilized, the proper lighting. Everything is completely done, and even the water is automated, so for the most part, I am in the desert, so every once in a while, I'll go scoop up some dirty water and then chuck it in here, and the dirty water, you can see there's some dirty water, it's going to flow into, into here. I'm going to make a whole video. There's a whole video coming that's going to show you how to completely automate, it, automate this step, so it's just free money. It's going to supplement this farm that I showed you. There is no more excuse that you, sh you should never be out of energy links. If you need energy links uh, to make acid because you need energy links and sulfur to make acid with all of these acid farms, which is another thing that you should absolutely be doing on an alt. If you're not, you're literally losing the game right now uh, with these machines. Like, you should have a whole alt character dedicated to acid. It's super easy and quick to set up. I might make a video on that, too. Uh, but yeah, that's again look forward to these things You'll have to subscribe for that and you know a year or two down the line when I'm playing some other game that you don't like You could always unsubscribe then whatever that's fine. I understand I do the same thing I'm just like you when I watch youtubers I'm like oh this guy's playing Animal Crossing that game's stupid unsub right so I get it I understand anyway Thank you so much click like before you go click the video on the right side of your screen and if you don't um you know what's going to happen? Well, if you do click it, you're going to find money on the ground. It's going to be a blessed day. You're going to get a good little reward. Money on the ground in the next two weeks if you click the next video.